warmer with a high of 55 to 60. It'll be dry again on Thursday with a high of 60, but a chance of rain on Friday. Back at 6, now to CBS. Big Mo building for Ross Perot. A new poll shows him beating Bush and Clinton in the key state of Texas. A medical study raises questions about the way men are treated and tested for prostate cancer. And I on America, a convict in a fight for his life. Will an innocent man be executed? This is the CBS Evening News. Good evening. Dan Rather reporting. Texas could be the key to winning the presidential election this year. Only California and New York have more electoral votes. A fresh poll indicates President Bush and Governor Bill Clinton could lose Texas to businessman Ross Perot if Perot decides to run. James Satori has more about waiting for Perot. The Ross Perot not yet presidential campaign scored a political coup today, creating shockwaves deep in the heart of Bush country. According to the new Texas poll, the billionaire businessman would narrowly beat George Bush in his adopted home state if the election were held today. Democrat Bill Clinton would finish third. That gives me a great sense of responsibility that <clears throat> I've got to, if, if the people across the country want me to do this, I'll have my work cut out for me because they're asking me to deliver, not talk about it, to deliver. The Bush and Clinton campaigns publicly shrugged off the poll. The White House spokesman says Perot is on a honeymoon which won't last. Still, Republicans can't afford to ignore him. We have a lot of work to do here, and I would expect that the president and the first lady will be making a number of trips back into Texas. Although he says he won't decide officially until June, Pro is making all the moves toward launching an independent bid for the presidency. He's already spent $400,000 of his own money on a petition drive to get his name on every state ballot. And today, Perot announced that rather than offend anyone, he has resigned from two private membership clubs that exclude minorities. For all of Perot's bashing of government spending and waste, the maverick billionaire's rhetoric doesn't quite square with his past. Perot happens to have made much of his fortune off the government. There's the Alliance Airport project in Fort Worth. Perot's family donated the land, then lobbied for tens of millions of tax dollars to develop it. The project has helped create jobs, but it's also created a valuable market for thousands of acres of nearby land owned by Perot. It's the ultimate manifestation, uh, the Alliance Airport, of, of Ross Perot's uh, welfare for the rich mentality. And there's the company he founded, EDS, which had paid dirt as a government contractor selling computer services to welfare programs. In his business dealings and his negotiations, uh, he's, he's looked out for himself. I mean, there aren't any accidental billionaires. I did not get rich off government contracts. Uh, at EDS, we would bid from time to time. We only got the jobs if we were low bidder. Perot claims the criticism is simply Republican dirty tricks. Whatever, the scrutiny will likely get worse. I'm not driven to do this. Uh, matter of fact, uh, the more I'm in it, the less interested it becomes. But, uh, James Hattori, CBS News, uh, Dallas. Perot is not the only political problem for President Bush. Another is the president's changed position on abortion. The president, through the Justice Department, is asking the Supreme Court tomorrow to reverse the landmark ruling that made abortion legal should a woman choose to have an abortion. The emotion this issue is generating was evident again today in the streets of Buffalo, New York. Giselle Fernandez is there. Both camps in the abortion battle came face to face and squared off early. You don't get a damn about these women. In steady rain, hundreds flanked the front lines, firing verbal insults outside three of the city's abortion clinics. Only once did tempers flare into blows. And police made only two reported arrests. One of a minister charged with disorderly conduct when he showed what he claimed to be a six-month-old fetus to pro-choicers. Our Father, who art in heaven. But overall, the protesters were unexpectedly passive, acting up mostly under the glare of a massive media siege. Abortion group Operation Rescue, successful in the past for grabbing headlines, vowed to blockade the clinics, as they did in Wichita last year. Pro-choice groups here were mobilized, pledging to ensure safe passage for patients, and did. 
we have prevented them from blockading the clinics. Operation Rescue has failed in Buffalo. They may have won this battle, I don't know if they did or not, but the war is not over. Both sides of the abortion debate claim to have been successful today. The police on the front lines say day one of the protests was a dud, citing the weather and the threat of hefty fines up to $10,000 as successful deterrence to any kind of violent confrontation. Giselle Fernandez, CBS News, Buffalo, New York. This is Susan Spencer reporting. While the demonstrators yell, the politicians calculate. Agreeing on one thing, the high court's ruling on abortion this year could have enormous political impact, especially on George Bush. Uh, my position has not changed. I am uh, pro, pro, uh, pro life. A one time supporter of abortion rights, Mr. Bush did shift position once, but today steadfastly defends his party's pro life platform, unlike many in his party. Just ask Senate candidate Tom Campbell of California. Straight talk. I'm pro-choice and one of the most conservative members of Congress. Or Kentucky Republican Susan Stokes running for Congress. I'm not a hard line person almost on anything. I'm not for abortion. I'm only for not legislating abortion. And I think that's very important to say that. The pending court decision has galvanized pro-choice Republicans who say they want to open up the party and get the anti-abortion language out of the GOP platform. Their argument to the president, we're trying to help you. We do hear of surveys that show anywhere from 25 to 37 percent of Republican women may walk on the party, either by not voting, voting for Ross Perot or uh, God forbid, Bill Clinton. You are talking about perhaps uh, two to three points that could shift. If, it, if the election gets that close, who knows what could happen. The Bush camp scoffs at the idea that abortion could decide the election, worrying more about Republicans who some think just want to embarrass Mr. Bush. They know, frankly, the president uh, can't uh, afford politically or for any reason, really, to change his position. That would hurt him significantly. I think it hurt the Republican Party as well. The first battle comes at a platform hearing in May, which, if the National Party had its way, would be the last anybody would hear from the pro-choice Republicans. But they vow to fight long enough to make sure that there is a vote on abortion at the convention in Houston, which is not a prospect that George Bush relishes. Susan Spencer, CBS News, the White House. Still ahead on tonight's CBS Evening News, a new battle between man and a very hungry insect. And a CBS News exclusive from a nuclear submarine beneath the Arctic ice. On November 11th, 1940, a legend was born in Toledo, Ohio. Jeep. Jeep earned its stripes before most of us were out of knickers. Tough. Unstoppable, go anywhere, get the job done. But all the odds, a lot of people don't know that Jeep is part of Chrysler. So now it's our job to keep the legend alive. And this is where we'll do it. Our new billion dollar... Before the first Jeep came down the line, our workers had the most intensive quality training in the history of Chrysler. And this is a new Jeep Grand Cherokee, a lot more room inside and the only sport utility with four-wheel analog brakes and a driver's airbag standard. Every inch a Jeep. To some people, Jeep is for climbing to the top of the world or just going out on the town. To us, Jeep is what all four-wheel drives are measured against. Always will be. Hey, in this business, you lead, follow, or get out of the way. The FBI today settled a racial discrimination case filed by hundreds of its own agents. After a year of negotiations, the Bureau has agreed to promotions, back pay, and better training for some minority employees. As part of this tentative deal, the FBI admits no wrongdoing. Infiltrators from Siberia are threatening the timberland of the Great Pacific Northwest, but this is not a job for the FBI, as Bill Lagatuta explains. Helicopters sprayed bug-killing bacteria on Tacoma, Washington this morning, hoping to wipe out a foreign invader with a scary set of credentials. The Asian gypsy moth, fast breeding and with a voracious appetite, is threatening to eat its way through the great timberlands of the Northwest. Officials believe the spraying here, and in Portland, and in Vancouver, Canada, is the only way to stop it. It's extremely serious. It's ravished forests in other parts of the country. The Asian moths, which have been quietly chewing up the remote forests in Siberia, 
arrived in the Pacific Northwest as stowaways on visiting freighters. They are cousins to the European gypsy moths, which have decimated hardwood trees in the eastern U.S. for a century. Only these eat evergreen trees, too, and they can fly farther and breed faster. Stop that spring now! But protesters think the bacterial spray, Bt, could be harmful to humans. Scientists deny that. This product has been sprayed back east on heavy populations for many, many years, and... Uh, to my knowledge, there's been no known cases of any problem with BT. That didn't stop the people of Tacoma from jamming a state hotline with questions, especially since they were advised to stay indoors during the spraying. The Washington State Department of Agriculture has stated there is no known health effects for humans. Even the Sierra Club said the risk may be outweighed by what the Asian moth could do, destroy a quarter of the forests here at a cost of $50 billion. A truly frightening thought in a part of the country where timber is king. Bill Agatura, CBS News, Los Angeles. Moving now from moth to mollusk, U.S. government investigators are trying to track down a giant African snail that's been sold as a pet in many states. This is not a joke, it's a problem. The problem with this big snail is it eats vegetables, so many in fact that it's considered a threat to crops and gardens. The U.S. Agriculture Department is asking owners of the snails to turn them in. Now, a brief look at some other stories. CBS News is following. Violent spring weather hit much of America today. A blizzard in the Midwest dumped more than a foot of snow in eastern Nebraska. In the mountains of North Carolina, up to five inches of rain flooded roads and forced hundreds of people to evacuate their homes. Downtown Chicago is nearly bailed out more than a week after a tunnel break flooded the loop. Engineers say it may take another week to mop up. And in New York, 43 passengers used inflatable chutes to evacuate a U.S. Air 727 after fire broke out in an engine. The plane was about to leave LaGuardia Airport for Boston. No one was hurt. There's more CBS News straight ahead. Next up, surprising word about the effectiveness of a leading cancer treatment. I tried it, and I feel great. Grape Nuts Try It for a Week Week is your week to discover. Breakfast with Grape Nuts cereal helps keep me going all morning. And it's really delicious. Try Grape Nuts, the fat-free natural energy source. See how good you mm. feel. Grape Nuts has this natural, hearty taste. There's nothing quite like it. And don't miss the valuable Grape Nuts coupon in this Sunday's paper. Try it for a week and see how good you feel all morning. Post Grape Nuts cereal. Try it for a week. You've just got to try it. Put your dreams on hold. Announcing a very special Accord lease program at participating Honda dealers. Here's a great big idea. Salad shooter! From Presto, professional salad shooter slicer shredder. Big capacity and power. Special blades to point and slice thick, slice thin, shred, even ripple cut. Right where you want. Salad shooter! From Presto. If you suffer from the common aches and pains of arthritis, doctors know that a safe and effective way to relieve them is something you may already have in your home. Extra Strength Tylenol Gel Caps. Tylenol helps relieve arthritis pain without irritating your stomach, the way aspirin or even ibuprofen can. What should you take for your arthritis pain? Talk to your doctor. The answer may be closer than you think. Tylenol, the pain reliever hospitals use most. From an Asian warlord's hideout to the streets of your neighborhood, 48 Hours tracks down the new heroin connection, Wednesday at 10, 9 central. A worth noting report out tonight about asthma. International experts say the widely used inhalers called beta agonists may not be the best treatment and may even make the asthma worse in the long run. The experts say asthma might respond better to certain kinds of anti-inflammation drugs which can treat the root cause of the disease. If you have questions about this, call your doctor or talk to your pharmacist. Another study out tonight challenges the conventional wisdom about the treatment of prostate cancer. CBS News health correspondent Edie Magnus has the details on that. Alan Boss is 52 and they caught his prostate cancer early. Taking no chances, he chose surgery to remove his prostate gland. We see no 
signs of cancer. A radical procedure, but one which is often a first line of defense against this disease, which is the second leading cancer killer of men. Had I not elected for surgery, who's to say that I would have survived? Today, there is evidence Alan may indeed have survived without his operation. Researchers in Sweden have found that a high percentage of men with prostate cancer live for years without treatment. They studied 223 prostate cancer patients over 10 years, all with early stage disease, all virtually untreated. They found only 19 of them died of prostate cancer. They concluded there was not much room for improvement in the survival prospects of patients with early stage disease, even if they did undergo a radical prostatectomy. I think there's no question that we're overtreating, but we don't know which ones we're overtreating. That's because there's no conclusive way to tell which tumors may just lie there, localized within the prostate, never causing problems, and which ones will spread and kill. For that reason, doctors have tended to advocate surgery or radiation, even though, as today's study bears out, there's no evidence that these treatments affect survival in any way. You're risking someone's life and a very miserable death, and I don't think any of us are willing to take that chance on following a patient like this based on the fact that it's a chance that it may not cause any problems. Nevertheless, several experts said today that the chances that prostate cancer will kill may ultimately depend more on the tumor itself and may not be affected by any of the standard aggressive treatments, including surgery and radiation. It may be, they say, that with prostate cancer, biology is destiny. Dan? So, Edie, what does this tell us about early testing? A very interesting question. The experts are saying that they are not sure that early diagnosis is very important. Now that statement is going to conflict with a lot of information that people have been getting. There's been a lot of talk about a new blood test that can detect prostate cancer years earlier than it might have been detected. But several doctors we spoke to today said there is no hard evidence that early detection can actually lead to longer life. I'm going to have the early test anyway. Thanks. Coming up next, Eye on America. Tonight, can the U.S. Constitution stop the execution of a convict who may be innocent? Look at me, enjoying a crisp red apple, even with my dentures, thanks to Super Polygrip. Super Polygrip holds so tight, many denture wearers can enjoy more of their favorite foods, even apples. Super Polygrip. Looks great. But come on, I mean, you know, you could have gotten yourself another BMW or a Lexus. I suppose. But why? This had everything I wanted. Power, great handling, ABS, yeah, but airbag, so leather, everything. I couldn't see spending 10, 20,000 more for what? Who makes it? Pontiac. It's the new Bonneville. Nice. In medical tests, people fell asleep faster and slept better with Unisom than without. Now I'm sleeping and sleeping. Unisom for faster, better sleep. People loved the old type of granola, but didn't know it was loaded with fat. Introducing new Kellogg's Low Fat Granola. Lots of delicious whole grains, almonds, and raisins, but only half the fat of leading granolas. New Kellogg's Low Fat Granola. Great taste, half the fat. If you want the granola that's low in fat, naturally you'd choose this one, New Kellogg's Low-Fat Granola. But if you want the one that was overwhelmingly preferred in taste tests, you'd still pick this one. Kellogg's Low-Fat Granola. Better taste, half the fat. You can stop smoking. You can undo the damage. We'll show you how with a special series of reports beginning Wednesday on CBS This Morning. California carried out its first execution in 25 years today. Convicted killer Robert Alton Harris was put to death in the gas chamber after the U.S. Supreme Court blocked his final appeals. The court will hear the appeal of another death row convict, this one in Texas. He says he has new evidence that he is innocent. The issue for the Supreme Court now is whether federal courts may consider the new evidence or are they limited to deciding only whether Texas gave him a fair trial. Correspondent Bob Fall has the facts of the case in tonight's Eye on America.
For the last 10 years, the state of Texas has been trying very hard to execute drug dealer Leonel Herrera for murdering two policemen. I did not commit the crime of, what, uh, of which I'm accused and uh, have been convicted of. I did not commit the crime. Kill headlights. Tell him kill headlights. Leonel Herrera's ordeal began here on this lonely Texas highway late at night, September 29, 1981. Two police officers gunned down at point-blank range within minutes of each other. One on his deathbed, identifying Leonel Herrera, who was convicted of the murders and sentenced to die. Even though now there is reason to believe the killer was not Leonel, but his brother, Raul. Raul himself was gunned down. But before he died, he confided in his attorney, Hector Villarreal. What he said was, no fue mi hermano, yo los maté which means it wasn't my brother, I killed them. And there's a prisoner here who refused to be interviewed who swears he saw Raul, not Lionel, shoot the two policemen. The prisoner is Raul's son. Lionel wasn't even there. According to Raul, Lionel was not even there, that's correct. Do you think Lionel killed the two officers? No. Do you uh, think his brother did? Yes. But Texas Assistant Attorney General Charles Palmer says statements by the lawyer and by Raul's son are hearsay and legally worthless. I'm saying that these affidavits are fabrications. You are convinced Leonel Herrera is guilty? Uh, there's really no room for any doubt whatsoever. So Texas escorted Leonel to the state's death chamber. A court order halting his execution arrived only 38 minutes before Leonel Herrera was scheduled to die. Assistant Warden Neil Hodges. Is it customary at this point they try to struggle? Try to no, sir. We haven't had any struggle from any of them so far. Then why do you need all this? Just I mean, off chance they might? Yes, sir. The question raised in this case is not just whether Leonel Herrera will die here. The question which the Supreme Court must answer is whether it is constitutional to execute someone who, in fact, if not in law, is innocent. Law school professor Jordan Steiker is helping prepare Herrera's appeal. I don't have to think that the evidence of innocence has to be 90% sure, 80% sure. I think it would be unconscionable to execute Mr. Herrera if there was a 20% doubt that the murder was committed by someone else. But the state of Texas, which insists evidence against Lionel is ironclad, argues that any evidence of innocence is irrelevant in the federal appeals process. The real issue is how far the courts are willing to allow lawyers for death row inmates to go in manipulating the process. The question here is whether, whether innocence, the concept of innocence, is relevant. Hell yes it is. <laughs> of course it is. I think it's abuse of the process that's really at issue here, abuse of the judicial process. When are we going to say procedure isn't enough? What about the Constitution? What about someone's life? We may never know which Herrera brother killed the two police officers, but the Supreme Court's decision could determine how far state prisoners can go in challenging the constitutionality of their convictions in federal courts before the prisoner is strapped down here one last time. In Huntsville, Texas, this is Bob Fall for Eye on America. Try, Jenny. What's wrong? Oh, you have arthritis? Me too. It's hard to grip your racket, isn't it? Here, my doctor told me about this. Motrin IV. It's the same medicine as in prescription Motrin in non-prescription strength. It's great for minor arthritis pain. And one Motrin IV works as well as two regular aspirin. Try it. You'll have the advantage next set. Motrin IV. The relief of Motrin in non-prescription strength. I swim, I jog, I love junk food. Sometimes even I get constipation. Now, x -Lax pills give you three choices. Regular, extra gentle, or new maximum relief. x -Lax, for regular people who sometimes aren't. Spring showers bring May flowers, but they'll also bring one lucky person a riding lawnmower in John Deere and TV8 Spring Showers Contest. Register now at your local participating John Deere dealer. The local winner will receive a Connie said it would be like this umbrella, and everyone who guesses the correct rainfall amount will be entered into the grand prize drawing. Just figure out how much precipitation Des Moines will receive in April according to the National Weather Service. Then enter John Deere and TV8 Spring Showers Contest. 
and spring showers might bring more than just May flowers. Why Centrum Silver? Because you're over 50 and you're just hitting your stride. Centrum Silver Vitamins. Because the latest scientific research about changing nutritional needs after 50 is built in. Centrum Silver. It's a great time to be silver. How bad are your allergies? Terrible. Terrible allergy attack? I feel like I just want to unscrew my head, take it off. Suppose I took your Benadryl away. I'd be home in bed. Would you try this new allergy medicine? Does it work the same? Dristan Allergy has a decongestant, and this Benadryl doesn't. So it relieves nasal congestion and pressure Benadryl can't. Let's try it. Okay. <laughs> I feel fantastic. Why? <laughs> I can breathe through my nose. <laughs> I don't need a tissue anymore. <laughs> new Dristan Allergy. Dristan, the face of relief today. A British magazine reports that the Commonwealth of Independent States, what used to be the Soviet Union, is offering to sell the U.S. Navy a nuclear-powered attack submarine. The Pentagon denies it. But the story underscores the end of the Cold War, on land, in the air, on sea, and under the sea. As Jim Stewart reports, it's a situation that threatens to torpedo much of the U.S. submarine fleet. Submariners call it the last hiding place. 500 miles from the North Pole, a frozen white wilderness concealing waters where even now the coldest of Cold War games are still played. The Navy says they're not alone out here, but while much of the old Soviet armed forces have ceased operation, Russian submarines have not. In fact, the Navy says at least six are on combat patrol right now, two possibly under this ice pack. Stationary dive, stationary dive. After 45 years of secrecy, a CBS News team was permitted this first time look at a Navy polar ice cap patrol. Coming to 180 feet. These are uncertain times for the U.S. submarine community. Their boats are getting older, there aren't any firm plans to build new ones, and although the Russians are still out there, the fear of war is really not. I think it's an extremely frustrating time uh, to be in our business. You know, it's always uh, frustrating to be in management when the uh, dollars are going down. We're trying to redefine uh, where we're going in the submarine force. But that battle will be fought above the surface, not hundreds of feet below the polar ice where other threats remain. Viewed from below, a jagged ridge of upside-down mountain peaks called keels present a deadly obstacle course. Now, how deep have you seen ice go, Captain? I've seen ice keels as deep as uh, 130 feet, and I understand that the, uh, some keels have been measured as deep as 190. It is 48 below zero on the surface, but a comfortable 68 inside the boat. 18 hours on duty, six off, and sailors learn to sleep through anything, even torpedo practice. Once surface, the crew hurries to clear the hatch, take on supplies, and slip back into the depths. For this is when a sub is most susceptible, and the grayling, like much of the U.S. military in this era of cutbacks and peace dividends, is feeling particularly vulnerable. Jim Stewart, CBS News, aboard the USS Grayling. All part of our world tonight. Dan Rather for the CBS Evening News. See you tomorrow. Good night. Coming up next on the TVA News, live at 6, snow, lots of it causing problems in southwest Iowa. Barbara Bush in Des Moines for a campaign visit, and we'll meet a man bringing his anti-AIDS message to Des Moines area teenagers. Connie with a cold night ahead and a surprise guest on tonight's edition of the Solidays Sports Challenge. All that and more next on the TVA News, live at 6. You know, I used to think my own opinion was all that mattered. But when you're spending your hard-earned money on a new car, it's nice to get a second opinion. And when three and a half million people second that, you've got a winner. Ford Escort. Prepare to be impressed. Fact. Ford will introduce its 93 Escort early this year, and all 92s must go before the 93s arrive. Fact. Get 2.9% financing on every 92 Escort in stock. 2.9 for 48 months. Get to your Ford dealer and prepare to be impressed.
At Big Sur Waterbeds, this waterbed sells for just $225.99. How do we sell it for so little? Simple. We own the factory. That's how we keep quality high and prices low. $225.99 also buys the Oakhurst, the New York, the Balboa, this Daybed, the Chantel, the Sedona, and more. Great comfort and factory direct savings from Big Sur Waterbeds, America's largest. 3715 Merle Hay Road at Douglas in Des Moines. Thank you for watching KCCI TV8 in Des Moines. And now from TV8, Iowa's news leader, Paul Rhodes, Kevin Cooney, Connie McBurney with weather, and Heidi Soliday Sports. This is TV8 News, live at 6. A spring storm packing gusty winds and heavy snow stalled over western Iowa, burying part of the state in a winter-like blanket, closing down schools and disrupting traffic. Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. We escaped the worst of it here in central Iowa, but our neighbors to the west weren't so lucky. In Omaha, the 9.3 inches of snow was the most ever to fall in the month of April. Wind gusts up to 40 miles an hour made life difficult for Nebraskans hoping for a taste of spring. Some other Nebraska towns reporting up to 14 inches of snow. In South Dakota, blowing and drifting snow also made driving difficult. Many motorists even forced to abandon their cars. South Dakotans hoping this would be the last time they'll be shoveling snow this season. And in North Dakota, a carnival wasn't going to be in business anytime soon. In Iowa, the southwestern communities were hard hit, with Hamburg having the most 14 inches of snow. Sioux City, 9 to 10 inches. Council bluffs up to nine inches. This latest and perhaps last blast of winter wasn't exactly greeted warmly by Iowans who had to hunt out those parkas and shovels. TVA's Dana Carden plowed through the snow-covered town of Corning today to see what folks there had to say about all this stormy weather. It wasn't exactly a major winter storm that rolled through Corning, but then five inches of snow isn't exactly what residents like John Riggle expected either. <laughs> This is very, very unusual for, for this time of year. The blanket of snow that fell was a blanket of death for Regal's tulips, as the whiteness of the lingering winter swallowed the reds and yellows of spring. No telling how much damage the freezing weather did to area flowers and tender tree blossoms. The snow proved to be more than just a nuisance and a novelty. It snowed fast enough and hard enough this morning and created enough of a mess on the roads that Corning canceled school for the day. These two guys took advantage of the day off to earn some extra snow money. We've got $12 so far. Well, I was getting ready to mow. <laughs> now I have to scoop. These kids had other ideas for the snow. They started out scooping up the whole backyard to make an igloo. Yeah. <laughs> but they ended up in all-out war. <laughs> I like it better warm, though, but this is okay for, <laughs> for today, anyway. <laughs> we need an extra day on spring vacation. Yeah. Our student teacher even said so. They knew they had to play hard. They'd be back in school tomorrow. And what we hope is the last spurt of winter will be down the drain. And this Christmas wreath will go back to looking out of place. Dana Carden, TV8 News, Corning. Des Moines and Central Iowa escaped the heavy snowfall. North of Des Moines, near Alleman, at least an inch of snow fell, blanketing spring flowers that a week ago were soaking up sunshine. An inch of snow also reported in Ames, two inches in Boone. In Des Moines, we officially received only one-tenth of an inch at the airport, but that was enough to keep local nursery workers busy covering their new plants. Even the swans and ducks on local ponds seem to wonder if this is really spring. In other news tonight, a Des Moines police say a 66-year-old woman was killed late this afternoon when she was hit by a pickup truck. Police say the woman was attempting to cross the street at 17th and High when she was reportedly hit by a westbound pickup. Police say the woman landed on the hood of the truck before falling to the street. The name of the 66-year-old woman who died in the accident has not been released. We'll have more tonight on the news at 10. First Lady Barbara Bush is in Iowa today making a number of campaign stops. Right now she's getting ready for a private fundraising event at the Embassy Suites Hotel near downtown Des Moines. That's where TVA's Jill Lingwall is standing by live with an update. Jill? 
Kevin, Barbara Bush is here promoting two things on our whirlwind tour of Iowa, her husband and literacy. Mrs. Bush told me in an earlier fundraising stop in Davenport today was very successful, and she's hoping in less than an hour to have another successful stop here at the Embassy Suites Hotel. The First Lady's first visit, however, to Des Moines today was at the Des Moines Register's Learning Center for Adults. Mrs. Bush, I'd like you to meet Dee Dee Nelson, the literacy coordinator. Hello, Dee Dee. Mrs. Bush visited students here as they demonstrated how to use computers that are teaching them to read. The First Lady even stopped to sign an autograph or two. <laughs> the First Lady sat down in a roundtable discussion with current members and graduates of the job training and GED programs. Mrs. Bush congratulated this 66-year-old woman for learning to read to her 22 grandchildren. Ooh. I have 12 and think I've got an arm load. Mrs. Bush says she feels the literacy program here is one of the finest she's seen in the nation. As they treat these men and women as a whole person. They don't just teach them to read. They help them. They support them. They go on to job training. I think that's very important. Now, Mrs. Bush told me she came to Iowa today because there are a lot of things going on here. Of course, other than Secretary of Housing Jack Kemp's short visit here during caucus time, this is the first official GOP campaigning that's gone on here. We'll have much more on the story coming up on the TV8 News Live at 10. Kevin? All right. Thanks, Joe. It's time to put the Des Moines Grand Prix on your calendar for the summer. The fourth year of the downtown race will begin July 10th, run through the 12th. Race officials today announced some changes in this year's event. Many of them are designed to save race fans some money. Admission to each of the weekend days will be down from $20 to $15, as long as tickets are purchased by June 30th. Also, children under five can go to the races free. It's an event that you can plan on spending uh, less money this year than in the past and make a great weekend, a mini vacation, if you will. Tonight at 10, TV8's Todd Mega will have more on several new races that are planned for the Grand Prix and the make-or-break year for the race that faces in July. Well, as we saw earlier in the news, another wild weather day in Iowa. Connie has a look at what's in store for tomorrow. Let's look ahead, Connie. Did you get the feeling that Mother Nature kind of overdid things? Maybe this is the time to look ahead. Uh, right after we look back just one more time, the uh, snow mounts all pretty heavy over in the western part of the state. As you mentioned, they had about 7 to 9 inches in the Omaha Council Bluffs region, 9 to 10 inches near Sioux City, really tapered off as you headed east, 2 and a half inches around Creston, and just a tenth of an inch here in Des Moines, which was enough for everybody, probably. There is something very nice in the forecast, and it doesn't start with S-N-O-W. More weather later. Thanks, Connie. And coming up next on the TVA News Live at 6, the MIA issue is preventing trade with Vietnam. At least one former Iowan now doing business in Southeast Asia says it's time to renew trade relations. A report from Rick Fredrickson in Bangkok. And Michelle Parker introduces us to a man bringing his anti-AIDS message to the teens. Destroying young people's lives in massive amounts of numbers. And so we... It's speeding your way. It's worth millions. It's Iowa's Powerball. To play, just take a play slip and pick five of the 45 numbers in the top area and just one Powerball number below. Or let the computer pick them for you for even faster action. Then watch the drawing Wednesdays and Saturdays before the 10 o'clock news. The Powerball adds power to the...